Did Sebastian Vettel claim pole position at his home track? Or did Mercedes and Hamilton respond to Vettel and Ferrari's good form? Find out in this video. At Hockenheim on Saturday, it was raining quite hard in the morning, but once qualifying came around, it did dry up. Allowing for a fully dry qualifying session where Sebastian Vettel claimed pole position. Vettel is on pole from Bottas second, Raikkonen third, Verstappen in fourth and Kevin Magnussen in fifth. Then sixth is Grosjean, P7 is Hulkenberg, eighth is Sainz, ninth is Leclerc and tenth is Sergio Perez. Being knocked out in QT was Fernando Alonso, Sergei Sorokin, Marcus Ericsson, Lewis Hamilton and Daniel Ricciardo. With Ocon, Gasly, Hartley, Lance Stroll and Stoffel Van Dorn being knocked out in Q1. So now let's go through all the teams and how they got on. For their team leader Lewis Hamilton it was an absolute disaster. After running wide on the kerb on the exit of turn 1 he basically broke his car. As soon after, he suffered a hydraulic issue which put him out of qualifying. And even though he tried to push his car back, he knew it was over. And this really could be a massive turning point in the World Championship. Because if Vettel wins tomorrow, he is going to open up even more of a gap to Lewis Hamilton. Exactly what he and Mercedes did not need. But at least they did get a car on the front row with Valtteri Bottas. Who at one moment was on pole position by a 10th but then Sebastian Vettel beat his time. And I think Valtteri did a good job to get onto the front row because I honestly did not expect him to do that. But Valtteri has a massive job on his hands if he's going to win tomorrow's race. Today for Sebastian and Ferrari it could not have got any better. Not only him getting pole position but Lewis Hamilton suffering the issues that he did. And the lap that Sebastian Vettel did to get pole position was absolutely fantastic. Not only on his second run, but also his first run was just great. And thoroughly deserves the pole position here at Hockenheim. But for his teammate Kimi Raikkonen, it was a missed opportunity as he made too many mistakes. He made a mistake on his first and second run in Q3. Costing him what I think would have been a front row start alongside his teammate Sebastian Vettel. And once again when it comes to qualifying Kimi just cannot stop making these mistakes. But despite that I think in the race tomorrow he will do well. It was a bit of a quiet session for Red Bull. Verstappen did all he could to get into fourth place as the top three were way too quick. And then because of the penalties that Daniel Ricciardo had before he entered the weekend, he was going to start at the back anyway, so that is why he did not compete in Q2. But at least with Ricciardo starting at the back, we will see some great dive bombs by him. And hopefully both Red Bulls will finish the race. Now let's take a look how the midfield teams did in qualifying. Fernando Alonso in 11th did all he could with a car that is just not good enough as obviously he did benefit from Lewis Hamilton and Daniel Ricciardo not doing Q2. But for Stoffel van Dorn, his worst weekend in F1 just continues. He was last in practice 1, last in practice 2, and last here in qualifying. So without a shadow of a doubt, this is his worst weekend ever. And for him, I don't see it getting any better tomorrow because he is so slow. But if there is chaos ahead of Fernando Alonso, I do see him scoring some kind of points. Renault in qualifying got a surprisingly really good result and if you offered Renault this result at the start of qualifying they would have snatched your hand off. Because with a car that is not suited to this track to be on the fourth row of the grid is a very good result. And with the good race pace they normally have I do think they're going to score some good points tomorrow. For the two Force India drivers it was a very mixed session. Sergio Perez did just enough to sneak into the top 10 but could not do any better than 10th. But Ocon was not good enough in 16th place which is poor considering how good he has been in qualifying compared to Perez. But at least the team did get a car into the top 10 and I do think they will score at least one point tomorrow. And they absolutely have to because of their massive Constructors Championship battle. On one side of the garage qualifying went really well. With Sergei Sorokin in 12th and a very deserved 12th. Because he did just enough to sneak into Q2 and then obviously benefited from Hamilton and Ricardo not doing Q2. And with Sorokin in 12th I would not be surprised if Williams actually scored points tomorrow. Because despite the massively bad aero the straight line speed on that Williams is still good. And that definitely is going to help Sorokin tomorrow. By no real surprise Toro Rosso were just dead slow. Down there in 17th and 18th with Pierre Gasly and Brendan Hartley. 
And again, this is no surprise because Toro Rosso have never really been good at Hockenheim. And because of the way this track is, the Honda Power Unit was never going to do well. And in tomorrow's race, they are going to continue to struggle. For Haas though, once again, they were best of the rest and had a great qualifying. Mainly because they did not bottle it and actually got the best result they could. Which is something the team have been struggling to do this year. And if there are retirements up ahead, I would not be surprised if Haas got a podium. Because right now, the pace off that car is just so, so good. And finally is Sauber, who once again with Charles Leclerc were great. As Leclerc again put his car in the top 10. And at this point, at every race weekend, he is earning his place at Ferrari. I think he may be disappointed that both Renaults out-qualified him, but I still think that's a good result. Because again, remember, it's a Sauber in 9th place. And with Ericsson in 13th, I think both Saubers could definitely score points tomorrow. Of course, they just need some luck and also some good pace to try and get the points that they missed out on back at Silverstone. But that is it for this very intriguing qualifying session. And with where certain cars are placed on the grid, I am really excited for tomorrow's race. And a third DRS zone is just going to make that even better. So don't be surprised if tomorrow's race is just as good as Silverstone. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I will be back tomorrow with two live streams. One is the race watch along and then the race reaction an hour after the race finishes. So don't forget to tune into that. And as well, don't forget to join our wonderful community over on Discord. The link to that is down in the description. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what did you think of qualifying for the German Grand Prix. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time it's been me Chazer HD, goodbye.